Signature black, right? Always. Signature Signature chef black. Yeah. I want to see those, uh, those fucking, uh, what do you call it? Ironic shirts again. Because I like ironic shirts. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) (laughs) I have a whole collection of them. (laughs) All right, Lou. uh, I have a confession to make, which I'm sure a lot of people are making this confession right now, which is I am basking in the light of comfort foods. Um, as usual, I have my burnt Cheez-Its going a lot, and um, I've been making a hell of a lot of grilled cheese sandwiches. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, the fat. It's all that and fat. the carbs. And the carbs. We're all indoors, too. What are, are, are you binging on something like that? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I've been doing a lot of cooking here at home, and, you know, it's like flavors from my childhood. I recently did like a, a cooking demo, actually, with one of um, my James Beard friends. And it's chicken adobo. So yeah, that's Ooh, all. Ooh, I'm gonna need that recipe because you know yeah. you're way more Filipino than I am. And I no, just check it out. I, I did it, and I did it, and she cooked along, and it was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so we're bringing in today um, a woman who's famous in Las Vegas. She's been at Forte Tapas for 10 years. She's owned that restaurant over in the southwest part of Las Vegas. She is an expert in European comfort food. So this should be fun and interesting yeah. also she's been hanging out with our friend jolene menina well when i say hanging out i mean like in a social distancing kind of way through secretburger.com right um actually you know what i was gonna ask you did you see the pictures of uh our friend jolene menina cooking um and doing actually i think she was doing the hachapuri um on secret Burger. i saw the sexy apron yeah but there's another one did you see her she was in a bikini the other day oh really no i think that was the one how many yeah. sexy aprons does Jolene? Jolene, how many sexy aprons do you have? <laughs> Jolene's ears are ringing right now. Because right, I we're know. Talking about her. Yeah, no, this was actual bikini. It wasn't like a sexy apron. Bikini. Oh, she was wearing a real bikini. She was like full on, like I'm out there, like super hot body in a bikini, rolling dough. So go check it out, Jolene That's so Manita, awesome. Instagram. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, Louie, let's go ahead and start with this podcast sharp quote. My number one elixir for anxiety, comfort food. Katie Lee, cookbook author. Yeah, she makes all kinds of comfort food um, in her many books. So, right, Food Network star. Yes. Yep. All right, Lou, today we are chatting with the awesome Nina Mancha from Hi. Fort Tapas and Hi. Our Collective. How are you um, doing? You look amazing. That background is super cool. Thank you. You really stepped up. It's my makeshift little studio that we've been doing the classes and everything with. I love love it. it. So we'll just (laughs) go ahead and jump right into that. Um, You've graduated to cooking teacher recently with the help of our friend Jolene Menina and secretburger.com. What kind of prompted you to start that and do that with Jolene? So I think, you know, it's funny to me when people are like, oh, we're week two or whatever. Like, as soon as people hit week one, I was already in week like two or three of this whole thing. Like I started feeling, you know, everything starting to hit and went through all the, you know, different stages of grief and whatever it is and seeing the restaurant empty and seeing people not in here anymore. And my mind immediately went to what can I do that still engages people and I can still have contact with people and still provide some sort of value and kind of kind of leave something for them to do at home and and, and provide some sort of happiness. And I called Jolene, I'm like, Jolene, can we do this on your site? Because Jolene uses Secret Burger for all these amazing events and right now that's not even possible. So 
why not do like this virtual sort of event? I'll prepare everything because even me as a, like I'm a home cook, I'm not trained professionally and I like things being presented to me as simple as possible. And that's how I like process things in my mind. And I think that's where my strength is that I can break everything down for a home cook or for someone who's a novice that they can easily execute it. They see what's in front of them to create this dish and then they can modify it based on like how many they want to create. So that's where it came from. And she's like, yeah, we can, we can totally do this. And it happened immediately. And we launched the first one, which was the biscuit cake. And then, you know, the next one, the next one, and you just slowly see, or like, not slowly, it's been very rapidly. You see the rise in people who are interested. And that just, that just like blew me away. It makes me so happy. It really is just a brilliant idea, Nina. Um, it, it's wonderful. Uh, the response has been awesome. And I love seeing the pictures in everybody's social media. I'm sure you do too. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so much yeah. fun. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that you did Hachapuri, yeah. <laughs> which is seriously, Louie, have you tried that before? I have not. Okay. Regrettably. What it is, is it's the ultimate cheese lover, carb lover, you got me a cheese. Uh, just porn, yolk porn, like bread boat. <laughs> All right. I got to check that out. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to love it. Do you love that dish too, Nina? Oh, it's, it's probably my favorite dish. And, you know, as I mentioned in the, in the video that we made it in, it's every, cause I serve here too. So I I'll cook, I'll serve, I'll do all the things, whatever. But every time I serve that dish, it's, it's like a one minute walk to a table where I'm holding it and I'm seeing it and I'm smelling it. And I'm like, I have to have this right now. And it's a versatile <laughs> dish too. It's very, you can, you can change the ingredients and modify them. I made it with the ingredients and the cheeses that are, that you can find at almost every store. And if somebody wanted to modify it to be like very traditional, like Russian or Georgian or whatever, we can, I can, I can share that with them as well. But I just want to make this something that's super easy for people. And what is it about this time right now? Louie and I have been talking about it. Like I've been binging on like cheese bits and all kinds of like stews, that kind of thing. What is it about right now that you just need comfort food? If you're feeling sad, you're not going to go have a salad. You're going to go have something with a lot of like bread and, and butter cheese. and cheese and that sort of thing. So cheese makes people happy. It just, it just makes you feel happy. Yeah. Yeah. Nina, I uh, kind of see you as a beautiful anomaly, anomaly because we met at the Women's Hospitality Initiative awesome, mm. awesome event. Yeah, you're right next event. to Bazaar. And <laughs> yeah, you're right last, next to our old restaurant. That I, that I went to this year. So. Yeah, it's, uh, and you were hawking caviar <laughs> and you're right next to a, a champagne stand. Yeah. So the way that I think of you as this anomaly, which is like, you're right now, you know, doing what you do at Forte, which is these amazing comfort food, European comfort food dishes. And then on the other end, it's like, you've got caviar and you're an expert in caviar I feel like right now there's honestly uh I feel like there's a, a need for both of it uh, <laughs> how do you feel about that I think so too I mean you know even even caviar is one of those things that my my whole goal with especially with the caviar collective because we've been doing caviar for the last 10 years and doing a lot of wholesale and we had private clients and I just the whole point of caviar collective was how do we bridge the gap? How do we demystify this product? How do we make it accessible to people? How do we take away this stigma that it's only, you know, available for a certain group of people, but also make those certain group of people feel like it's still something very exclusive and special. Like my whole idea about it was to educate people, all these different ways you can enjoy it, the different types, you know, some people tried caviar once in their life and they say that they don't like it, but they don't know what kind of caviar they've tried. They don't know that there's a difference between the different kinds. So that's my whole goal. So I never get offended if someone's like, oh, I don't like caviar. And then I give them some of our caviar. They're like, oh, you know what? I actually like this, you mm -hmm. know? So it, for me, it's all about the social experiment of it all and, and engaging with people and figuring out why certain things haven't registered before and how I can be of service to maybe like adding something like a different perspective. Is the caviar available right now or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I have, I have a lot of it here at the restaurant. Um, we, we still have clients purchasing it. Um, and I think even during times where things are difficult, people are still seeking things that make them feel like 
things are not difficult. Right. You know? and that is true. Being able to enjoy a nice bottle of wine or being able to enjoy, enjoy like a nice dinner at home, even though it's not, you know, a Michelin star chef preparing it, maybe you can emulate that. I am going to kind of up my game a little bit and make these different options available online so people know what we have ready to go and uh, finally launch the online business and all these different things that I didn't really have time to focus on before, but now is a good opportunity to do so just so people have that information available to them at their fingertips. That's so awesome. Go ahead and ask your question. No, that's awesome. Cause I was going to move, um, ask, you know, moving forward, what's in store for Forte Tapas. So you've yeah. mentioned a little bit about your, you know, the online side of it now, and then that yeah. you're, you're now teaching. So is there anything else that we're kind of like missing here in the big picture? I mean, I think, I think, I think the teaching component has always been something that I've wanted to do. I just, uh, I just didn't know where the space for me would be in that and if people would actually be interested because for me, all these dishes are very simple and I'm like, you know, there's, there's plenty of other recipes that people would like to learn more. And so I'm just trying to create like value in the way that I do it. And I, I would like to continue doing these because this is, this is exercising a muscle for me as well. Right. And being able to, to really focus on the recipes and how I've gone through the processes and really just making them as simple as possible for people to follow, to create a dish and then be able to like make it their own in the future. And that's what we did with the clay pot. That's something that we did with the whole kit, but they actually got a clay pot and that's another dish that you can, you can modify in so many different ways and create like a hundred different dishes out of this like little thing, so. Yeah, I mean, I feel as a chef, as I teach something, I always get better at doing it myself. Yeah. So, I mean, if that's, if there's anything to have gain in all this, it's like, you just get better as a cook, as you teach someone else, because you see something differently through Absolutely. someone else's eyes. Absolutely. And for me, I've always, I've always been like a little bit self-conscious about it because I never had professional culinary training. It's always just been like with my family and cooking. So I never really, I never really, um, you know, put myself out there that way. So it is scary to put yourself out that there that way. But I think, I think for the, like, I think for the home cooks and for the profession, I just, I can, I can offer something in between and hopefully people enjoy it. And, and that's what it is. So something like bridging the gap. Yeah, yeah exactly. Definitely. And you know what, Nina, haters are going to be haters <laughs> and lovers are going to be lovers. Yeah. And the awesome chefs and the awesome foodies out there are going to be like, this is so cool. We're learning something like we don't know about European comfort foods. Like it's mm -hmm. all a learning experience, whether it's from a home cook, a self-taught cook, or somebody that goes to culinary school or has like a hundred years of experience, yeah. you know, Massimo Batura, a three Michelin star chef might not know how to make a hajiburi, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I respect both things. That's fine. It's also my belief that, you know, there's no, more than one way to skin a cat, more than nine ways yeah. to skin a cat. So sure. everybody's going to have their, everybody's going to have their own like way of doing things. And you know, what's For correct? Sure. Everybody should have a voice in the cooking world. So yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Nina, your background is Bulgarian. Yes. Uh, over your career, You've talked about sharing your roots through your restaurant and through your food. What does yeah. that mean to you? Um, you know, it, it really means it really means everything to me. I, I came here uh, when I was three years old, and uh, my parents were always very big on on keeping up with, you know, the culture and, and and our roots and everything. And I've never I've never shied away from that. I've always been very proud, but. In the same token, every time someone's asked me where I'm from growing up, I would tell them Bulgaria and they, they didn't really understand where that was. And for me, the greatest, the greatest pleasure is being able to open this restaurant and being able to share recipes that I've, I've learned from my family and being able to cook with my great grandmother and with my father and having like two or three generations in one room doing all these things together. And I think food is one of those things where it's an international language and um, that's how, that's how I wanted to bring people together and selfishly show, show them where I'm from because it's, it's, it's a culture that not a lot of people 
knew about, and especially about 10 years ago, it's, there's a lot of stigma with Eastern European cuisine. It's not, it's not like that anymore. Everybody has been so open in the last five years and the way the, the whole culinary landscape has changed here. It's so accepting and welcoming to different types of cuisines and fusions and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, it was tough in the beginning because everyone came in, they're like meat and potatoes, Eastern European food, that's what it is, blah, blah, blah. That's it. Yeah. So now people are starting to understand all the all the beautiful ingredients and spices and flavors that all can come together and, and really make a great meal and traditions. Yeah, that's traditions. honestly, I mean, for me, that's my favorite thing about going to restaurants because, you know, especially as a chef, you feel like you can pretty much make anything. It's like, oh, I just need a recipe and I can make anything yeah. happen. Louie and I talk about that all the time. Yeah. So the difference is getting something from someone that's authentic and it's genuine and it's cooked with passion and a story and a history. And I feel like that, you know, you've been around for a little more than a decade now, right? It's yeah. like you did that before a lot of other people did it. You know, a lot of these chefs nowadays that are getting like, you know, they're getting a lot of credit. Um, they are just moving back to their home cooking. Yes. Um, and we and we know who they are. There's a ton of them that we love. And, you know, they did a bunch of other stuff. They did French food, of course, because a lot of us do. Mm -hmm. They did other kinds of cultures of cooking. And they've recently come back to their cultures. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, honestly, the most beautiful and most satisfying food to me is the kind that comes from your heart and it comes from your family. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what my, my dad always says, like, don't, don't ever forget where you came from. Like, it. You know, and, and when you get to go back and do what actually makes you feel good and passionate, then that's what is, and that's what we're seeing a lot of is, you know, all the chefs that worked at these different properties, cooking food that's not their own, and now are able to open their own restaurants and really, like, that comes out, that comes out in the food, that comes out in the ambiance, that comes out in everything. And I love mm -hmm. how our generation, too, is so flexible. Yeah. You know, we're a lot more flexible than our parents and our grandparents' generations when it comes to, like home cooking, it means a totally different thing to us because, you know, a lot of us are immigrants, either new immigrants or, you know, second or third generation immigrants. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was, we don't cook exactly like for me, I don't cook Portuguese and Filipino food only. Yeah. Like, just like you don't cook Bulgarian food only. Like your place is called Forte Tapas. I mean, you clearly are like looking at Latin stuff and you're looking at like other cuisines. And I feel like, you know, that's, that's really what America is. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to switch to our new segment. Um, show and tell. Louie and I are calling it show and tell. Show and tell. <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> like when you're in elementary school and you brought like your favorite, you know, car in and your favorite like dinosaur doll and you'd show it to the class. So Nina, I have a feeling I know what you have, but go ahead and show us what you got, your favorite kitchen tool and why. Well, this is definitely one of my favorite kitchen tools. Okay. And some of you have already seen this, and some Whoa. of you already have this, but this is this is a little clay pot. So, um, Bulgaria, we're, we're very, um, I, don't want, I don't know another word for famous, but it's very well known for like ceramics. And these are like, you, you know, you, you have different vessels that are made out of uh, ceramic and they're all with the traditional mandala and everything very beautiful but um this is actually one of the dishes that we did for i think it was the it was the second cooking class was the Thracian clay pot hmm. so this is great because it's a very simple way to make a nice little stew in this and you can one portion the other ones we have are bigger and then you have like the huge one and it's similar to like a tagine it's just oh, okay so, so it's it's everything Yes, so you can layer all the different ingredients and all the flavors just kind of do get their to own them. thing. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's so cool. I've been for a long time, so this is my show and tell. That's awesome. So, how much is one of those? So this one's twelve dollars, oh. and then the other, like the bigger ones, we were selling. Uh, if people just want to buy the pot, it's twenty dollars. And this is like super traditional. Like every every Bulgarian household has this. Gotcha. So it's very like it's a staple item, and you know, for the clay pot we just did, you know, tomato, pepper, feta cheese, some meat. Like it's just different layers of of items, and then they all just kind of stew together and come together. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
Okay. You just let them do its own thing and yeah, little no, clay pot. When you open it, all the aroma comes out. What yeah. can be better than that? Yeah. It's yeah, nice. Oh, everybody's doing stuff in like an Instapot and you can put whatever in it and you just put it in and just like all cooks itself. So this is like a universal cooking vessel. That's, thing. it's the Bulgarian Instapot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, we're going to do on the fly. So 60 seconds rapid fire questions with Nina Manchev of Forte Tapas and Caviar Collective. Louis, ready? Go. Nina, what's your favorite comfort food right now? Uh, right now, I'm eating chopped hot peppers, garlic, olive oil, and dipping bread inside of it. That's my comfort Ooh. food. I don't know. I'm into spicy foods right now. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Cat or dog person? Dog. Best binge-worthy show? Ooh. I think lately it's been Ozarks. Oh. Yes, like many. Dream place to travel and eat? Ooh. Next, I want to go to Turkey. Oh, I've heard amazing things about Turkey. I want to go to Turkey. Guilty pleasure. Sleeping. <laughs> Good one. First thing you'll do when this pandemic is over. Go to Turkey. Nice. No, go to a, go to a beach. Honestly, I've it's it's been a whole thing where like I it's never been a good time. When this is over, I want to go to a beach. Yeah. Childhood food craving. Ooh, ice cream. Cookie dough ice cream. Our timer just went off, but we're going to keep going. Go okay. ahead, Louie. Okay, that's, uh, the next one's, uh, what's your favorite, favorite Corona Apocalypse beverage? I recently tried a Truly, and I really enjoyed it. Oh. How do you practice self-care? Um, I try to get sleep and not stress out too much. I feel like less daily motion has has lowered the stress level a little bit so that's good that's yeah. good uh what restaurant are you most excited to go back to oh my gosh there's so many um oh. off the top of my head i will say uh Spare and wolf mordeo and Dito <laughs> great choices um know, right? a very important question what is your go-to kitchen jam Apricot. Oh, like like a like oh, a nice music. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> That's badass. We, 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 we haven't gotten that yet. yet. <laughs> we no, but I knew somebody was going to answer it that way. <laughs> Apricot's cool too. <laughs> Let's what rephrase is, that um, question. What no, is how you shake your booty, babe? <laughs> yeah. What is your perfect uh, date? And it's like, what is that from that movie? Like, like May, April twenty third, or something. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I feel like it's like Mean Girls or one of those kinds of movies. Although it's not Mean Girls. Bond, oh, the pond hasn't completely grown out of my hair. So. No, it's the um, it's that movie with Denise Richards where she's like a beauty queen or something. Yeah, it was a no, with a what's Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock. Oh, Miss Congeniality. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. World peace. <laughs> that one. <laughs> and the Barbie hands. Yeah. All right. Uh, so how are you music jamming in the kitchen? <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, can I look it up real quick? What's your favorite yeah. song? I have so many. Or is it like a certain channel, maybe like on Sirius or Ooh, on Sirius, Pandora I'll, or something? I've been listening. It's it's a channel called Happy Beats. Oh, I, I like really that. like it. Cool. Nice. So I would suggest people check that out because it really does make you happy. Nice. Happy Beats. So Nina, series. we're going to go ahead and have you sell it for Forte Tapas, Caviar Collective, Secret Burger, whatever you want to. It's your time. Okay. Well, I want to let you guys know that we're still here. We're open Thursday through Saturday for delivery and pickup. And then also through this amazing platform, Secret Burger, we're selling kits so you can recreate some of Forte's favorite dishes and eventually add some other fun uh, recipes to your mix. And you can pick up your kits on Saturday and then Sunday we cook live at 3 p.m. on Facebook. And if you ever do need a little bit more of the more luxurious items, we have caviar, we have uh, pomoni iberico, we have different chorizo, charcuterie, cheeses, so on and so forth. So I'm here, anybody can contact me directly or through Forte's page and uh, looking forward to serving you. Nina, we will definitely be there for our Thracian clay pots in the next few days. Uh, yeah, let me know, because I think All that's right. 
website. We're going to keep having these kits available for purchase uh, right after the, the videos are even done so people can catch up. At any awesome. Time. Nina, thank you for everything. It was so nice to have you. Thank you for joining us on the show and we wish you so much good vibrations and luck yes. in the next. Thank uh, you. I really appreciate takes. it for you guys too. Thank you.